What's going on everybody? My name is Tomas and this video is about making your workflow more efficient with the utilization of Adobe Media Encoder. This video is brought on by uh, Mobile Carlos. So uh, shout out to him for giving me the info that I needed to explore this in more detail. Now if you shoot 4K and you shoot 4K on a GH4, this video is going to help you uh, achieve 444 color without an external recorder. Essentially we're going to take a 4K file, crunch it down to 1080, and give you uh, more leeway with the color, in addition to making your workflow way more efficient. Now I need to preface this video by saying I'm no expert on Adobe Media Encoder. I've just been uh, messing around with some settings and uh, reading about Adobe Media Encoder and I've learned pretty efficient workflow that I wanna share with you in this one. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into this tutorial. We're gonna wanna open Adobe Media Encoder. I've already got this queued up here and we're gonna wanna import our footage. To import footage into Adobe Media Encoder, uh, go ahead and hit the plus button here, find your project footage and import it. I wanna import all of them at this point. From the quick filter in the preset browser, go ahead and start typing Cineform. And it's a GoPro uh, Cineform profile pr or preset that we're looking for that's 10-bit. So here it is, we're gonna go ahead and grab it and drag it on over to one of our uh, encode files or one of our source files. And from here, it's just gonna, if we hit play right now, it's just gonna export uh, the same settings because it's matching um, the source footage. We don't want that. We wanna create a user preset so we can utilize this preset in the future if we want to. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and right click and we can hit export settings from this and we'll launch our export setting for this specific file. Without going into too much detail from this window, we want to export video and audio for this specific example. Now, if you shoot a lot of B-roll and you don't want the audio or the scratch audio from that, you can uncheck this, but I would leave it checked because we're gonna save this preset for future reference. Now, going uh, through the next section of what's most important, there's some effects. You can apply uh, LUTs or lookup tables. Video, we'll come back to that one momentarily. Audio, uh, if you wanna set your audio, uh, go ahead and play around with these settings. You can import some caption files and publish um, publish them, which leads me to the last tab here. You can uh, select a YouTube uh, account and log in. And when you're done with this queue, it will publish to your YouTube channel, which is neat. We want to head on back on over to video, which we were set at before. And from here, I want to drag up the quality to five. And I want to uncheck the match source uh, resolution because I want to downscale it to 1920 by 1080. And because it's locked, it's going to scale it uh, proportionately. And that's what we want to happen. Without messing with the frame rate or uh, field order or square pixel, I don't want to do that. I do want to check render at maximum depth and then from there I want to jump outside of that and use maximum render quality and use frame blending. Before we hit OK, I want to head back up to save this preset because I want to use this in the future. For me, I think 1920 by 1080 is a fantastic name and I don't want to save any effects presets because I didn't add anything like that and I didn't add any published settings. So I'm not going to check either one of those boxes. I'm going to hit OK. Now that I've saved this preset, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now before we start this encode process, I want to make sure that this preset is uh, associated with both of my files that I want. So if I uncheck this, there's going to be a uh, user presets and groups. These are ones that I've saved and customized for myself. I want to grab this and drag it on to that second file. Now I'm going to undo that because uh, I've noticed something. If you drag it and you drag it below this, so it's going to export two different files. Uh, one's just going to be the exact source and one's going to be what it is you set. Now I don't want that. I want just two files from this export queue. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it on top of that uh, file and go ahead and hit play. Now we just sit and wait for Adobe Media Encoder to process these two individual files into the format that we selected. I'm going to talk about file size difference because you do need to be aware of the potential of your disk space becoming full when you do this because it keeps the source file and it also keeps the export file in which you change the file format. It isn't a huge difference in this example on this video, but you can see that the original file was about 870 megabytes and the export file or the finished file was about 954 megabytes. Just be aware that there is potential that your file format size could double. Now, how do we automate this system to just work without me having to go into Media Encoder and execute this every time? Uh, well, let's talk about watch folders. Now, a watch folder is something that uh, Adobe Media Encoder will watch 
uh, hence the name, if you ever drop a file in there and, and it will automatically uh, export or create an export of the file type that you wish. Without talking about it too much, let's go ahead and just execute. Uh, I want to add a watch folder for my project fo footage and then I have a watch folder here. So anything I drag new into this uh, a preset will be set to that. Now I want to make sure that this folder is empty before I begin because if it's not and you add it, uh, Adobe will start going to work and start messing up all kinds of stuff. So make sure that folder is empty before you start this. Now I don't want it to be a YouTube 1080 file uh, whenever something's dragged in that folder. I want it to be my new preset. So I'm going to grab my new preset, drag it onto that, and anytime I ever drag a source footage into my watch folder like we're about to do here it's going to automatically prompt Adobe Media Encoder to execute this uh, queue and then it'll start running automatically without me ever having to touch it which is a pretty neat way to manage your your project well that about does it for me in this one I'm going to provide you guys some examples based on the 444 Four footage versus the 420 footage off the GH4 all recorded internally. I'm going to color correct the footage that we just encoded based on this 1920 by 1080 preset and then I'm going to grab that lookup table or the LUT based on that color correction, apply it to the source footage from before we uh, did the encode process and I'm going to export both of them and then I'm going to put them side by side so you can be the judge. If this video helped you improve your workflow, feel free to give me a thumbs up. If it didn't, give me a thumbs down and let me know in the comment section down below what it is that I can do to improve. In addition to that, feel free to check out my channel and some of the past works that I've done. If you like what you've seen here and what you've seen on my channel, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Take care.